In this video, I'm going to look at how you can draw a ray diagram to show the image formed by a diverging or concave lens. And like all of these lens ray diagrams, the first thing that I'm going to do is use a ruler to draw in the principal axis. Then I'm going to draw in my lens roughly in the middle of the paper and to indicate that it is a diverging or concave lens I'm going to draw the arrowheads on the end of the lens like that which is supposed to show the shape of the lens is like that. Having drawn that in I can then mark in the focal length which is described as six centimetres and on a con Diverging lens, we saw that you marked the focal length on the opposite side of the lens to the object. For a diverging or concave lens, you're going to mark it on the same side of the lens as the object. So as I'm going to draw the object over here, I'm going to want to mark in my focus, which I'm told is six centimetres away. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I can label that with an F. Next I'm going to draw my object which I'm told is eight centimetres away and is two centimetres high. Now I know that's six centimetres away so I can count two more to make my eight centimetres away and then I can draw in my object which as before I'm going to draw in as a vertical arrow. I'm going to label that as object and the arrow is head is helpful so I can work out which way up my image is formed. Okay, so I'm now going to draw in my two special rays that help me to see where the image forms for this lens. And the first one of these is, like before, going to be parallel to the principal axis until it hits the lens. Now, because this is a diverging or concave lens, the ray afterwards is going to head off this way, but it goes in the direction as if it came from the focus. So what I now need to do is line up my ruler with the focus here, and then where that ray hit the lens there. And when I've carefully lined those up, I can draw a solid line to show what the ray does going through the lens. And the second special ray that I'm going to draw is going to go from the top of the object to the centre of the lens. And the good thing about this one is it's the same for whatever kind of lens it is. The one that goes through the centre of the lens is not refracted and keeps going in a straight line. So if I line those up neatly, draw that in and put the arrows on. Now. These rays are not crossing, which tells me there is not a real image formed here, which means I'm going to need to add in a large eye as it's going to end up being a virtual image. So I can label my eye over here. And now I am going to need to add in some virtual rays to see where the image forms. And in fact, I only need to add in one virtual ray. So remember that our brain is a little bit stupid and assumes that this ray has always traveled in a straight line. So if we line up the ruler with this ray here and then add in a dotted or dashed virtual ray. Oh, my ruler's moved slightly, not very good. A dotted or virtual really not doing a very good job on this one. Add in my dotted or virtual ray going back this way. There we go, finally managed that. And now we can see that this virtual ray crosses this real ray and where these rays intersect here is where the image will be formed. And like before, I'm gonna draw a line vertically from the principal axis up to where those rays cross and I can label that as my image. And if I look at this image and compare it to the object, I can see that it is smaller, so the object is diminished. I can see that it 
is the right way up. So I described that as upright and I can see that a virtual and a real ray are involved and because any virtual ray is being involved it tells us that it is a virtual image. So I have discovered that it is a diminished upright and virtual image and the good thing about these concave or diverging lenses is that they always produce that kind of image so the ray diagram always looks much the same so it's a little bit easier than the other kind of lens that you saw where you could get different kinds of images formed. Once again if I wanted to find the magnification I could do that by measuring the image height and dividing it by the object height. I hope you have found this video useful.